Today, I have the honor of presenting to you an energy revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, every great discovery begins with great outstanding creators. At first, everyone is ridiculed and mocked, and just like in the case of Copernicus, it was only a hundred years after his great discovery that he was truly appreciated. In Tesla's case, it took 30 years, and it was only after his death that people finally stopped making fun of him. And if it went for put differently, without politicians and without business, these great creators would never have been recognized because the agency of great people from that other side is also incredibly important for all these inventions to come to life. So now, how do innovations come about? We are always solving some kind of problems. What problems do we currently have? One of them is plastic. We know that there is a huge problem with plastic all over the world. I myself was recently, where was I? In India. Dear friends, the mess in Mumbai is unbelievable. There is so much plastic by the sea on the beaches that it's unimaginable. When I was building my own house, imagine that the very first scoop that went into the ground dug up trash, and it turned out that three meters down, there was a 10 by 10 meter pit filled with garbage. Yes, that's basically how I started my adventure with building my house. The problem with trash is huge and overwhelming. You've probably also heard about the blackout in Spain. This awaits us all over Europe and around the world. Why? Because the demand for energy is growing and will continue to grow. And since the power lines are outdated, unfortunately, we're not ready to handle this increasing amount of energy. And now, what if we could get clean energy from plastic? What would the world look like if we solved these two huge problems? And my dear friends, today I want to present a great, incredibly powerful worldwide discovery made by a great Pole who was a rally driver. 50 years of experience in creation, a visionary who truly did something amazing. And here, knowing this man, I think for the first time I understood what it means to be a patriot. Because my dear friends, people talk about patriots, you know, like Poland and all that. My dear friends, imagine that if you try to Google this man right now, the only thing you would find online is a bailiff's auction of his house. And now, why is that? Because he invested all his money into the project, because for decades he believed he had discovered something extraordinary. And now, once he made this discovery, the company that examined his idea wanted to buy it out and said, we'll take this patent from you for any amount you name. But he said no, because this is for the Polish people. And my dear friends, I am so inspired by the man whom I will soon introduce to you. It's truly something incredible, because things like this just don't happen. Honestly, you know, it truly even brings a genuine tear to my eye, a profound emotional response. Let me introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Henry Kurowski. Please give a big round of applause because he created biofuel from plastic. And now, after 50 years of figuring it out, he finally did it. Those applause were rather short, I must say, but at least there were some. And you, you've been recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, but that's not all because this is just the beginning of the journey he has started. And now, imagine that from this plastic waste we've obtained biofuel. This biofuel can power huge, powerful engines like those used in ships, for example. If we were to set them up in the city center, they could provide heat for a city of 10,000 people and almost completely supply it with electricity. The exhaust fumes, which are usually associated with those huge ships and massive engines, we capture them and are able to turn them into methanol. So it is zero emission, and this methanol can power the entire rehydro technology, which I would like to present to you in a moment. So Henrik is not just a creator of biofuel from plastic, but from that plastic he made biofuel, heated cities, combined CO2 with hydrogen, that is carbon dioxide with hydrogen, and turned it into a liquid energy storage. He powered the entire hydro technology with methanol, which he now wants to share with you, because it is also revolutionary. And so this concept is still a concept, but it works. Just to be clear, we are able to make it work because it is quite simple to build. Yes, the technology we are about to share with you already exists, works, is operational, uh, and has certifications. So there is no more speculation here. We actually have this equipment. So three revolutionary technologies that we are now going to present to you all hydrogen based. And now the video, please. Oh, the video isn't playing. So what now, team? 
Shall we play it? The technology we are about to present is mobile. We can drive it around. We produce hydrogen here and now, right where it's needed. There's absolutely no need for complex transportation systems, nor is there any requirement for extensive storage facilities involved in this process. This means that the energy can only be generated precisely where it is generally needed at the exact moment it is required. For instance, we can efficiently refuel cars directly on site. Utilize multi multidimensional technologies, which we'll break down for you in a moment. The first piece of the puzzle is H2 power. This is a machine that, as I mentioned, can produce hydrogen right here and now on site, because the biggest problem with hydrogen for this technology to see the light of day is transport. It's very expensive, dangerous as a storage, and that's why there, there still aren't many places in Poland where you can use hydrogen, because these are the issues. You'd have to build an entire infrastructure, and our device completely eliminates this problem. So where can we use this hydrogen? Production is, I mean, where exactly? Production takes place at the point of demand, without transport or storage, scalable without limits, and the source is water with inexpensive methanol. We achieve the highest level of purity. I know that Olen has failed to, to reach this level a few times, so we're proud of that. And this machine also operates uh, at uh, very high temperatures, so now, technology companies that need hydrogen can use it for many technological processes. Heavy industry, cement plants, I can even boast that we already have our first agreements, very advanced ones, and uh, we will soon be cooperating with, uh, with industry giants. Steel mills can use it as well, as can the chemical industry, refineries, and many, many other large, powerful companies. The second element of this puzzle, from the same core, meaning the heart, is our invention and we have a choice. We can produce either hydrogen or electricity from this hydrogen. And imagine that such a small block, a container can provide power, right? It can provide power, but to what first? Well, it can power a small factory or 20 buses or 120 cars or 300 single family homes. Now with this methanol and water, as I mentioned earlier, we can power small neighborhoods and we can set up any number of these containers, making us energy independent from large power plants. And to illustrate how much power that is, you would need 60,000 square meters of photovoltaics to match the output of this small container. If you have good eyesight, you can see some white dots over there. That's our container. So, this gives you an idea of how environmentally friendly it is as well, since you don't have to take up so much green space. Wind turbines, the ones we pass by on the highways, two of those huge, powerful wind turbines generate about as much power as our technology. And they're not exactly green either, because if you know, the amount of steel buried in the ground is absurd. Pouring all that concrete is a bigger or smaller disaster for the environment. And just imagine, we're talking about two such wind turbines that deliver our level of power. That means about 360 tons of steel, which are no longer needed. Applications. First and foremost, it's about energy backup. So hospitals, we can make government offices independent where a continuous power supply is needed. Data centers in industry for factories. Many, many manufacturers have the problem that they'd like to start up all their machines at once, but they can't. Why? because they are not able to obtain as much energy as they need. Our machine can make up for their shortages. Also, in crisis situations, talks are currently underway, even with Ukraine, to provide them with energy security so that their uh, strategic locations are protected. And now, to sum up, because it's mobile, it's also amazing that we can drive it around and change its location uh, as needed. Zero emissions. The energy is 50% cheaper than traditional energy we get from power plants. A quick start in five minutes and unlimited applications and mobility. And ladies and gentlemen, the third point, the creme de la creme, is the refueling stations powered by this core. As I mentioned, we have a choice between hydrogen or electric energy. 
and we can create an entire network of stations and provide local governments and cities with a supply of hydrogen that is produced here and now independently from anyone, from water and methanol. So the concept is that, as you know, there were huge subsidies for hydrogen buses. Some people took advantage of them, took the risk, but others realized that it's great to get big subsidies for buses, but there's no hydrogen available, right? And in fact, the wiser ones didn't take up that offer. But here's some information for everyone. You can get into hydrogen because we have a solution for independent stations. And that's something beautiful and wonderful because we've solved the entire logistics problem, at least for now, for the whole world. So the current problems faced by local government shy fuel costs, pressure to reduce emissions, lack of infrastructure, expensive electric chargers. And uh, our solution is uh, affordable hydrogen from local production plus independence from external suppliers. And now, once again, the applications are very versatile. All public transportation, energy corridors. Imagine that our stations could be set up at highway rest stops, charging either electric vehicles or hydrogen vehicles at a relatively low cost because without transportation, which is very expensive and without storage, we solve this problem. And then there are entire logistics centers. So again, larger companies can also benefit by being able to purchase, for example, uh, trucks or various types of equipment that require hydrogen. We can refuel this equipment on site independently. Benefits for cities. What's amazing is that such a station thanks to the lack of transportation and storage, offers hydrogen at very, very low prices. And the return on investment can be as quick as 18 months. Independence from fuel prices and stable operating costs, that's what every business likes. Environmentally zero emissions, reduction of CO2. Penalties, you know very well what they are. Cities have to reduce them. We have a solution for you. And strategically, complete energy autonomy, flexibility uh, in proportions, because we can control that. Do we want more electricity? Do we want more hydrogen? It's adjustable and scalable according to needs. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the world premiere of truly powerful tools that have the potential to revolutionize hydrogen globally. And dear friends, it all started with Henry Kurovsky. And that's how it was with Tesla, with Copernicus. The question for you is, will we allow such a great mind to remain unappreciated? Will we allow him during his lifetime to receive our help so that he can realize his great vision of an energy revolution, starting with biofuel? It depends on you, on us entrepreneurs, whether this will see the light of day. So great creators and thinkers have no chance without us. And I hope that here among us today are people who want to join this revolution, who want to be the fathers of success. Because with you, we have the power to make this a reality. We invite everyone to collaborate with us on many levels. Uh, from capital for scaling up, to strategic partners, local governments, uh, open to these innovations, investors with a vision for the future, and companies with hydrogen and energy needs. And uh, we have quite an exclusive offer for you as we invite you to the Gromada Hotel for, for discussions, which will probably be a bit more relaxed. We have a conference room, so now we also invite interested guests to the first floor for some coffee. There we also have our small booth and later the Gomada Hotel where after dinner, before dinner or maybe even during, we can calmly talk about signing preliminary agreements. Because if we're going to have some fun with this, we're inviting the first eight interested investors or local government representatives or basically first come, first served. We'll put you on a plane owned by Yannick, who is here with us and is a co-owner of Rihauro and we'll fly to Spain for a live equipment demonstration. How does it work? It works. So I think this could be pretty cool. Only eight spots because someone still has to pour the champagne. So ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to join the hydrogen revolution, which starts right here. Together we emphasize, together we have the power to make this happen. Henrik alone can't do anything. I believe that such great people must have tremendous support. Right now, I am dedicating my life to this mission. I hope there are people here who want to join as well, because without all of us, this will never see the light of day. But with your help, it could be child's play and 